happy to see in our cultural program. This cultural pro program will be about the whole Russia, about secrets of Russia. And uh, I think we can start, but before, I would like to remember that we with Lada will be more than happy to show you not only Russia, but show only interesting facts. And uh, please feel free to ask questions on YouTube. Not only question, you can, for example, share your emotion and uh, we hope that it will be interesting time today. So let's show the presentation and discuss plan of our today's cultural program. First of all, we will speak about Russia general info, small information about what is Russia uh, and uh, so on, so, so forth. Uh, facts which you have already know about Russia, then discuss about contrast, why Russia city, or city, not city, the country of contrast, and about Russia's treasures. Also, we will speak small history part and about Russian peculiarities. Yes, uh, like uh, each country, we have special peculiarities and we have special food, the most tasty uh, speak today. Also, we will speak about activities, traditional Russian song and dances, and the last one, Russian language, the most funniest part. Yes, prepare your books, we will write something, and maybe pencil. So, let's start with the general info about Russia. Uh, yes, you can see the huge, oh, sorry, huge Russia. I, unfortunately, I can't, I can't hack our country because of the seven, 70 million kilometers, 16 countries around us, and 11 time zones. Yes, for example, now in Samara, near 8 p.m., in um, different parts of Russia, somebody um, wake up and have a breakfast. Yes, because we are so big country. So let's go next. And uh, here you can see the name of the biggest Russian cities. Yes, let's a little bit moving because you see Yekaterinburg. And now, as you know, we are in Samara. Samara, like a Kazan, you can see in this, yes, Kazan, also located on the Volga River. Novosibirsk located in Siberia. And Moscow and St. Petersburg, I think you know, Yekaterinburg, located near the Ural Mountains. And Nizhny Novgorod, that's, that's moving, moving, moving. Yes, Nizhny Novgorod, I am a peer again, located on the Volga River. So, let's briefly see the views of this city and go next. Yes, the Siberia, I think you saw snow. Nizhny Novgorod, Samara. Uh, hello, hello from yesterday city tour. Yes, I think you remember our excursion. So, the brief information about Russia. Yes, now our population is like this one. Uh, the population here and 85 federal districts we have. Yes. yes. Let's see the Russian nature. I would like to tell you that we have a lot of animals, insects, uh, and uh, they are so big here. So, dear friends, uh, now I will give you maybe 10 seconds for writing the facts which you have already know in YouTube, and we will see it. So, please write, and when you are writing, let's start. Yes. First of all, let's discuss about Moscow. Here you can see the date of foundation Moscow. Uh, it's not a secret that Moscow is the capital of Russia, and uh, Moscow one of the biggest cities in Russia. Why? Because we have a lot of residents and the residents in the metropolitan area. Moscow is the city which a lot of uh, activities, a lot of tourists come every year, every day, and uh, all season in Moscow is so beautiful. So, let's discuss about history of Moscow and continue the facts about Moscow. Uh, originally established in this date, I think you see, Moscow grew to become a prosperous and powerful city that served as the capital of Grand Duchy that bears as the, uh, and the namesakes. Uh, then the Grand Duchy of Moscow involved to the Tsardom of Russia, Moscow still remained as the political and economic center of the Tsardom history. Interesting fact that um, from one period, Moscow no, was not a capital, the capital was a St. Petersburg. Here you can see the square of Moscow. It's so big because a lot of city. And I would like to tell you that the Moscow, one of the 
fastest growing tourist destination in the world. Moscow has a lot of business center, one of the popular in the world and the biggest on the Europe, you can see here. Uh, here you can see the picture from Moscow Olympic Games, which was in 1980. Behind me, the, one of the complex, uh, it's named VDNH. VDNH is a place like an exhibition. It was in the Soviet period. A lot of people come here to show their achievements in the agricultural and technical development. Also, you can see the Astankin Tower, the one of the biggest TV uh, tower fun fest from the World Cup. And uh, let's move, move here. Uh, the MGU, MGU is Moscow State University. Again, view of Moscow. And yes, what is it? It's the Moscow Metro, one of the oldest metro in the, uh, our country. And uh, the interesting fact about Moscow Metro is that the station looks like a museum. Yes, you can see the modern one, the oldest one, and uh, uh, it's so cool. The cultural capital of Russia, St. Petersburg. Yes, if you want to see Europe, in Russia, let's come to the St. Petersburg. Yes. So I hope in YouTube you write something. Yes, we have something. No, dear friends, please share your emotion about Russia. And uh, maybe now I think no, nobody has this um, thinking about Russia that Russia vodka or I can bears. But let's thinking about it. And now I would like to tell you. Please be active and we go through them and I will give the words Lada and Lada will tell you about contrast and something interesting. So, dear friends, now it's time to write question. Typing, typing, typing. Or maybe you can make screenshot and post us in Instagram or post your Instagram here. So, Lada, it's words to you. Hello so, there, everyone. I will go to check your question. I would like to tell a huge thank to Masha and now it's my turn to tell you some facts about Russia. People uh, in general, they are always shocked by Russian contrasts. Uh, in fact, such large countries as Russia should uh, have lots of secrets, miracles and interesting things. And one of them are contrasts and paradoxes. Uh, so we will talk about Russian weather, Russian locations, Russian nations and Russian development. So, yes, it's all about Russia, as you can see it here. So, the first point is weather. Due to the huge lands in north and south, east and west, there are lots of various climates in Russia. Uh, it could be below zero uh, temperature in summer and plus 5 Celsius degrees during the winter time. And there are strong winds near the oceans and dust storms in deserts. There are heavily rainy places such as a city called Severo Kuriusk in the far east. Uh, and always sunny towns such as Ulan-Ude, the city in the Russian Siberia close to the border with Mongolia and China. It could be snowy and freezing. Uh, in the Caucasus Mountains and hot near the Black Sea in the city called Sochi. There, yes, the, I think you know that Winter Olympic Games in 2014 took place there in Sochi. One day it will be snowing and snow and ice will cover ground in all uh, city. But next day it could be really warm and rainy weather. It could be 5 Celsius degrees below zero in winter and at the same time plus 40 Celsius degrees during summer city, uh, during the summertime. So yes, it's all about Russian weather, Russian climate and Russian contrast. So the next thing is Russian contrast and it's about locations. There are plenty of settlements in Russia. So big cities are bordered with small villages. Towns are located near the rivers and giant empty forests and fields. So you can drive like 20 minutes from the center of the town and appear just in tiny settlement with five buildings in general. And I see that now we have some questions and I will be pleased trying to answer your questions. Why are there a lot of unpopulated 
Uh, so the question is why there are so plenty of unpopulated territories in Russia. And as Masha told you before, uh, the square of Russia is really huge. It's about like uh, 17 uh, square kilometers. So that's why in general, 70% of citizens, they live in the European part of Russia. Uh, as you know, uh, the European part is the part where Moscow, Samara City, St. Petersburg are located. And only 30% of Russians, they live in Siberia, uh, in like Asian part of Russia. Uh, so due to the climate and due to the economic probably reasons, uh, plenty of uh, territories, they are still unpopulated because maybe there could be swamps or there could be forests and so on. So there are no uh, reasons to live there probably. So that's why some territories, they are so unpopulated. For instance, there are plenty of cities, towns and settlements in the north that are still unpopulated or uh, under the destroying of Soviet Union, they have started to be unpopulated due to economic and probably climate reasons. So thank you for your questions. I think uh, I tried at least to answer. And any other questions there? Okay, there are no other questions, but I will be pleased to answer all of your questions. So let's go and see other, yes, let's see other pictures of uh, Russian uh, locations. So uh, actually, modern cities nowadays, they're located on the west part, as I said to you before. And um, frightening expenses where there is no living creatures and is forced to the east part and especially far east where the city Vladivostok is located. So uh, as I told you before, there is Siberia, so there are plenty of swamps and the climate uh, is really rainy and there are uh, plenty of winds during the especially winter time. So that's why probably some of their settlements, they are unpopulated nowadays. So yes, and let's see another. Let's see other pictures. See, here you can see the picture. Here you can see the picture of the Red Square in Moscow during the, I guess it's like Christmas holidays probably. So it's like Christmas market. And here you can see that's that's the picture. Uh, it's like we call it like bad areas. Uh, it's like the field in the territory of some uh, cities where there are plenty of buildings. Uh, it's like there are only buildings, only buildings for living. So, so that's why we call it like bed areas. Uh, it means like, oh, like sleeping areas. So there are plenty of buildings there people live. You can see yeah, in general, there could be like nine story or 12 story buildings. You can find it in every Russian huge city. The next, uh, the next picture is about Russian village during the autumn time, probably. You can see in Russian villages, you can find plenty of wooden uh, houses, uh, one or two story houses. And also this is the Russian village during the winter time. As you can see, everything is covered by snow. Uh, I think uh, in the old territory of Russia, you can find uh, that during the winter time, everything is covered by snow and ice, of course. So the next thing is uh, nations. I think I will better stay here. Uh, Russia is a multinational, multicultural state with over than 190 ethnic groups. Uh, they are uh, des designed as nationalities. So the population of these groups vary uh, enormously from millions to like 10,000, for instance. So obviously uh, the most widespread group is Russians. And over 75% of inhabitants are Russians, or they uh, consider themselves of Russian origin. And some interesting facts about them that um, uh, predominantly they are Eastern Orthodox Christians, and their language is Russian. And for instance, and there is a border with some other region called with the territory of the uh, Tatarstan Republic and uh, the nation of this republic is just like 20 kilometers by car, I guess. So yes, it's just like, like 20 kilometers away from uh, Samara city. There is the border with the Republic of Tatarstan and the nation of Tatarstan is Tatars. So their religion predominantly is Muslim, is Islam. So that's uh, why uh, you can see that we can just live uh, next 
to each other. So that's why there are plenty of religions and plenty, plenty of nations. Yes, you can see that the faces of Russian citizens. So the next thing is development of Russia. Uh, here, this is the picture uh, in the center of Samara city that you can see that the skyscraper is located near the two-story wooden building. And the next picture is Lachta Center. Lachta Center is, a, is, I think it's the tallest, it is the tallest building in the Europe in general. Uh, so you can see it's uh, just the neighbors of uh, the Lachta Center, it's like a business center, is just like some kind of wooden building, some kind of village. And also uh, Russia is famous for the aerospace industry and especially rocket industry, yes, and space industry. But at the same time, our aviation is going to be decreased. Uh, I mean, the, the number of the uh, aircrafts, they're decreasing uh, year after year. And in July, there was the Salon, I guess maybe you heard something about that, called Max. So Max is a famous international uh, avi uh, aviation salon when plenty of various aircraft, helicopters and aviation techniques uh, is exhibited. So you can find that there are plenty of various uh, air, uh, rocket engines, uh, aircraft engines and other, other de uh, developments. They were exhibited there during that time. And the next, the most probably interesting thing is Russian treasures. And what do we call Russian treasures? Of course, it's our nature. This is our mother nature, as we call it in Russia. So let's meet with some of the most interesting place, probably, of Russia. So the first thing is Kamchatka. So Kamchatka Peninsula is a huge, wonderful country located in the far east of Russia. It is uh, close to, I guess, probably Alaska state and Japan. Uh, so there are plenty of volcanoes and um, I think there is 151 mountains are sleeping peacefully now and only like 30 of them, uh, they are running amok. And the next thing about Kamchatka that is separated from Alaska by a strut less than four kilometers. So it's just the four kilometers away from Alaska state and USA, of course. So the area of Kamchatka Peninsula is approximately equal to the area of the whole country called New Zealand. So there is just a small part of Russia. At the same time, the size of this part is the same as the size of the whole country. Yes, that's fantastic. The next thing is Cosmodrome. As I told you before, and you probably know that uh, Russians, they are famous for the space industry and for the space development. So uh, Vostochny Cosmodrome is uh, 52 degrees uh, north of the equator. And for instance, the biggest Cosmodrome in the world uh, called Baikonur, it is just 46 degrees. So the total area of this Cosmodrome is approximately like 1000 square kilometers, so it's really huge. And the next, our treasure is Lake Baikal. I think probably you know some facts about that because I think it's really popular uh, among the tourists, among the foreign tourists. Uh, and Lake Baikal is the oldest lake in the world. It's about 35 million old, according to different resources. And at the same time, Lake Baikal is the deepest lake in the world on Earth. Uh, its depth is approximately like 1,600 meters. Yes. And at the same time, Lake Baikal has the cleanest fresh water on Earth. And here is the picture of the Lake Baikal during the winter time. As you can see, the surface is covered totally by ice and it's absolutely fantastic view and you can find the absolutely outstanding and, uh, out and absolutely wonderful scenery if you would like to visit Baikal during the winter time. The next our treasure is Siberia. Yes, most of the Siberia is located in the uh, permafrost zone and the soil there uh, does not though even in summer uh, except like 
probably for its surface layer. And probably Siberia is famous for the forest, of course, for the forest and for the swamps. Uh, so there is located probably uh, one of the biggest, the largest swamp in the world called Vasugan Swamp. Uh, its area is approximately like 52, 53,000 square kilometers. So it's the same time, some, ki some kind, it's bigger than the territory of the whole European countries probably. The next is Altai Mountains. So Altai Mountains belong not only to Russia in general, some of them belong to the territories of China, Mongolia and Kazakhstan. Uh, so in the territory of Altai Mountains, it's also like getting the Siberia part of Russia, uh, the total uh, the Altai territory is like more than 17,000, uh, they have 17,000 rivers and like 13,000 lakes. So it is really absolutely outstanding place f just for visiting, visiting and having rest there. This is actually Ant Altai Mountains during the autumn time. Next is Arctic Ocean. Yes, this is Arctic Ocean. And Arctic Ocean is the coldest, the smallest and shallowest of the planet's oceans. It uh, makes up about 5% uh, of the total area of the Earth's waters. Uh, and, and interesting fact that in the center, in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, there is ice. Although it drifts uh, from place to place, but it Previously, it never melted, but I guess that due to the climate change, yes, and the melting of the ice in the north and the south part of Earth, probably it will be, it, probably it will start to melt soon. Who knows? Who knows? And also there is located the uh, biggest island in the world called Greenland. That is, uh, the owner of the Greenland is this country called Denmark. I think you know. And there is also located the biggest archipelago in the world. The next, the most wonderful probably thing that is, can be considered as a true miracle is northern lights or polar lights. Uh, the diameter of the northern lights ovals is about 3000 kilometers. And duration of the northern lights varies from a dozen minutes to several days. And of course you can find northern lights during the winter time and also uh, if you would like to uh, see northern lights it's better to visit the north, of course north part of Russia for instance Murmansk region and there are just several countries that you can find northern lights. It is Russia, Finland, Sweden, Norway, uh, probably Alaska state and I guess Canada. So yes, there are just several countries where you can find the Northern Lights. The next thing is Golden Ring of Russia. What is it? The Golden Ring is a touristic road through the old cities of Russia, where unique historical monuments and architectural monuments have been preserved during the probably 11th century or 12th century. Uh, it, one of the cities uh, like the, probably the middle city, called Vladimir. Uh, there are like 20, uh, 139 architectural monuments of the 18th and 19th century protected by the state. And I guess there was the question. No, there was no question. Okay, thanks. Uh, the next is Volga River. Of course, you met the Volga River during the city tour and soon, I guess on Monday, we'll have the tour around the embankment of the Volga River. Uh, so it reaches a length of 3,500 kilometers and it is the longest river in Europe. Yes, uh, but it's actually it's not the longest river in general in Russia because we have the really, really, really longest rivers in the Asian part called Yenisei or Ob or Lena or Amur. But Volga is the biggest, the longest river in the European part of Russia and in general in Europe. Uh, so interesting fact that the curious one that rains bring only about 10% of water to Volga. Another 30% is accounted for by 
ground waters and 60% of the water is going by snow melting. Yes, during the winter time, the Volga is totally covered, the surface of Volga is totally covered by ice and snow. And during the spring time, the snow and the ice obviously start to melt. So yes, and then the level of the water is going to be increased day by day. And that's why it's just, the water is becoming better, uh, better and more and more every day during the spring time, the snow melting time, we call it like that something. The next is Sochi. Uh, I think you know that Sochi was the capital of the uh, Winter Olympic Games in 2014, yes. And at the same time, Sochi is really popular as summer relaxing, probably, resort for Russian citizens. And during the summer time, I guess that the population increased for maybe seven times more during the winter and probably spring and autumn time. Yes, and thank you for being with us during uh, this time. It's now uh, time to talk about the Russia through the ages or the history of Russia. So the first thing is Kievan Rus. The main date for the like development of creating uh, the Russian state is 988 year. This is the Christianization of Kievan Rus. And it took place in just several stages, but just remember that the Kievan Rus, the state of Russia was developed like in the 10th century. Yes, there are just some pictures. And uh, during that time, there was just the development of uh, Russia. So the Moscow uh, was built due, uh, in the 12th century and various uh, cities, for instance, the city that uh, consists of the Ru Russian Golden Ring, they were developed during that period of time. The next time is Russian Empire. Probably it was the most outstanding part, the most outstanding time in Russian history. As you know, Peter the Great or Peter the First, uh, he ruled uh, the um, Russian state during that time and he decided to create the Russian Empire uh, for between the Russian Tsar Dome and Russian Empire, he decided just, to, why not? Let's make the Russian Empire and it will be great. So he uh, created the city called St. Petersburg and it's, uh, became the, it became the capital of Russian Empire. Then, unfortunately, in 1917, Russian Empire was destroyed and communism started to be ruled in Russia. So yes, USSR or the Soviet Union was, yes, it was developed during that time. And unfortunately, civil war took place from 1917 till, 19, uh, till 1923. And it was really hard times because during the Soviet Union times, uh, we had some kind of hard periods. For instance, like the beginning of development, it was like 30s of uh, the 12th century. At the same time, we had the World War II or the Great uh, Patriotic War, as we call it <laughs> here in Russia. Uh, at the same time, the first man wa was uh, launched to the space and so on and so on. So nowadays, we live in modern Russia as we call it. And we also, we have our advantages and disadvantages. Uh, but nowadays we are proud to be Russians and we are proud that they live, we live here. We have plenty of modern cities like megapolises, for instance. We have Moscow, St. Petersburg, Samara, Kazan, Yekaterinburg and other, other, and other, other cities. But we are mostly proud that we have people because it's the main heritage of Russia. The main treasure is still people. And the next hour thing that we would like to talk about is Russian peculiarities. Because each country, it has their own peculiarity. For instance, the stereotypes about, I don't know, Italian, that they 
uh, like the language of just, right? And that they like pizza, for instance. And the main stereotype about Americans probably that they like fast food, probably, yes. Uh, so yes, it's all about stereotypes. And the stereotype about Russia that they are vodka and balalaika and it's everywhere, it's really widespread in Russia. And for instance, that Russians, they can be angry or serious all the time, but it's all about stereotypes. We can see that we can smile. Yes, <laughs> if uh, it's just a bit between, it's all about the distance between people. So Russian peculiarities. Uh, the first peculiarity I would like to tell you, oh no, yes, it's about Russian streets. So it's really popular because during the Soviet Union time we had um, cities that were called according to some people, for instance, the city Volgograd, it was uh, named after Joseph Stalin and it was called Stalingrad. Uh, the same thing is happened uh, in modern Russia. We have streets, squares, parks that are called the same in each Russian city. So for instance, you can find Lenin Street in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Samara, Kazan and other, other, other cities and towns. The next famous thing is Russian banya or Russian sauna. It's like the sauna that you would like to have. It's like bathing, yes. And the curious fact that Russians like to have a sauna or banya during the winter time. So first they are bathing, then they are going outside and they just dive into the uh, snow. It's okay, it's okay for Russians, yes. Uh, the next is about uh, flippers. If you would like to visit Russian apartment, you will be, you will be asked, would you like to wear flippers? And there is no other answers like, yes, of course. Uh, probably because it could be really, uh, really freezing during the winter time or you just like our tradition. So yeah, it's better to wear flippers when you just enter any house. And the last thing is about central uh, heating, central warm heating uh, system. Uh, it could be really, really, really cold and freezing during the winter times and during autumn also. So that's why uh, you will find the heating in every Russian house, in every Russian apartment. So yes, it's better to use it because during the winter time it could be outside like minus 25, but at home it will be like plus 25. It's really, really cool actually. And the next our chapter is about Russian food and I will be great to give a word to my colleague Masha to tell you some curious facts about Russian food. So here we go. Hello, 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 dear friends again. Uh, now we suggest you to take a cup of tea. Yes. And when Lada returns, I would like to say thank you, Lada, for tell some interesting facts. And now it's like a pause in our topic because uh, please take a cup of sandwich or maybe some cup of coffee like this one. So let's talk about traditional Russian food. Yes. I suggest to open the old picture for make your appetite uh, interesting. So let's briefly discuss about each topic and then I will tell you about breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, beside, behind me, yes, let's go. You can see a porridge, a typical kind of Russian breakfast. Here you can see two kind of, sorry, two kind of soups. And uh, again, typical Russian breakfast, which pancakes, with pancakes. So breakfast, uh, usually it can be porridge, uh, porridge, what kind of rice, uh, simolia, oatmeal, uh, maybe others kind of porridge, or fried eggs with sausages and a cup of tea or coffee. Yes, uh, maybe you think that uh, tea lover only dear friends from United Kingdom. No, Russians also like drink tea. For example, if you're on um, studies or at work, a lot of people like uh, have a tea break. Yes, it's like a tradition. Then uh, you come from your colleague and say, hello, let's make tea break. And uh, he or she say, yes, of course, let's do. Why not? It's so cool to have a tea break. And tea break, it's not like just drinking tea. It's with uh, some kind of cakes, sausages and uh, the tea break became the big meal 
party. So about lunch. Lunch uh, the type of food when we also eat soup. Yes, Russian like eat soup on uh, like a first dish uh, on the lunch time during the lunch time. And uh, the, this type of uh, soup you can see on this slide and the next slide also. Uh, what kind of soup you can see? First of all, it's borscht. What is it, borscht? Borscht is the sour soup made with beetroots as one of the main ingredients which given the dish the typical color. Yes, the red color like my t-shirt. Uh, what kind of this uh, soup you can see? It's the uha. What is uha? Uha, as you see, yes, the soup with the fish, and you can see the head of fish, you're absolutely right. Uh, why Russian like this kind of soup? Because it's tasty, yes, like the uh, all soups. Uh, what uh, the easy to get fish, because uh, a lot of Russian seeds are located on the river. For example, if you talk about Samar, we located on the Volga river, and it's not a problem to make uh, soup from fish and goats, uha. Also, we can add potato and uh, so cool. Yes, let's turn our image and I will talk about ужин. What does it mean ужин? Ужин is dinner. Uh, dinner is usually the last time for eating in Russia and uh, uh, it's like a rule to eat, not eat after 6 p.m. but no, Russian eat uh, uh, until 6 p.m. and after 6 p.m. it's uh, not stop word at all. What you can see here is uh, fried chicken with potato. Yes, Russian likes potato very much. As you see, uh, remember the previous slide, Russian eat potato in soup. Russian in pot uh, eat potato during lunch. Russian eat potato during, for example, lunch or dinner. What is it? It's mashed potato. How to make mashed potato? I re recommend you to try to make in, in your country or with your friends, it will be funny. Yes, now it's like a minute of, minute of cultural part. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So, how to make mashed potato? For mashed potato, you should first of all have potato. <laughs> yes, boiled potato, then take mm, like this one, 100 or 200 milliliters of milk, uh, join together and mash. Uh, also, don't forget about salt paper as you like and uh, your mashed potato will be ready. Just enjoy and have uh, fun. If you don't like milk, mm, why not? You can use water from potato. Yes, uh, because when you finish boiled potato, some water please go inside, but some stay and uh, the do mash. What is it? This is a cucumber, this is a potato, okay. Uh, this is potato, this is a tomato. What is it? Some strange, uh, I don't know what is it. Dear friends, it is a cutlet. Cutlet is the special dish from meat. How to make cutlet? Yes, it's mesh meat, like this one. But don't forget to add a little bit bread and again a little bit milk. Then mesh and uh, fry it from different parts. Uh, here we discuss, here we also discuss is the porridge, rice porridge. Uh, what is it? It is the pancake. Pancake we will do on our cooking masterclass. Please be ready to have fun. And let's briefly discuss about drink and continue our talking. Uh, drink. What kind of this one? Yes, it looks like a strawberry. Yes, yes, yes. But it's not a juice. It's a compot. What is compot? Compot is frying, boring juice. Not juice, uh, fruit. How to make? You should take fruits, uh, use a boil or some other kind of uh, special kitchen equipment, put to, uh, there some kind of sugar, not so big, little, small. But if you like sweets, put it all, it's upon you. And of course fruit, then boil, wait and drink. Um, it's like a joke, but Russian divided two parts. First, who likes the hot compote and who likes the freezing compote. They add a lot of ice and uh, looks so interesting. What others uh, we can see on this picture? Drink. Kvas. Have you ever heard about Russian kvas? Yes, it's some uh, something like 
beer, maybe you think, if we look at the car. But no, it's not at all. It's the, some kind of drink which made from bread. Yes, bread, uh, waiting, 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 and appear quas. But uh, we prefer to bought it in our magazine. Uh, we have a lot of activities, and one of uh, these activities is Russian winter activities. And the next, as you understand, we will discuss about Russian summer activities. What can we see on this picture? Russian uh, has winter, for example, if we talk about Samara, near five months. What can we do five months? Oh, we can play hockey, uh, go skiing, go skating, play snowboards, um, make some fun like, uh, yes, this snowman. And the funniest activity for our children, yes to taste the ice from the street. Uh, why they do it um, during the winter, don't know, but maybe to stay home and not go to school. Russian summer activities. Summer, now, if we talk about, for example, summer, which in this year, uh, we look like uh, Africa, <laughs> but more than Africa. Uh, on this week, we have temperature near 40 degrees plus zero uh, 40, pl uh, 40 plus degrees it's uh, so hot and uh, a lot of Samaras and the uh, Russian people because not on Samara was very hot temperature they go for a walk on nature swimming and do activities for example climbing mountains but I suggest you to do not in the 40 degrees maybe less ride bicycle play games and I would like to pay attention about this activity. Yes, it's fishing. Who knows, maybe these two guys uh, try to make their own uha and prepare fishing. Uh, Russian nature, as I uh, told you before, they are not so serious as maybe you think. We like a typical uh, people from the whole world. We have sadness time and funniest time. And let's discuss about funniest time, because sadness, how to discuss? If you would like to cry, you can send smile on our YouTube, but we will talk about the funniest time is uh, songs and dances. Yes, uh, our ancients, if we talk about before, 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 before us, maybe 15th or 16th century, they prefer to dance, to come together and dance. Now we do the same, but in clubs and the music a little bit different and not only Russians. <laughs> but uh, the oldest clubs look like here. Yes, the tree with some decorated. Now we have the same, some lights like a decorate. Yes, yes. And girls looks nice. Yes, like now the same that the modern and the fashion is changed. Uh, turn and you can see the girls had the long dresses. Each girls cover their head and make some heads. Uh, not allowed to do heads like this one. No, they should make cover and uh, yes, catch it and dance together. Yes, now Russian tradition dance looks like this one. Also, uh, Russian like sing a song and have fun. I would like to pay attention on these beautiful guys, <laughs> these beautiful boys, what they do. Uh, they not want to eat borscht? No, they prepare for song and playing on the spoons. Every children, uh, every child in Russia who uh, once go to the uh, children's kindergarten, uh, he or she played on spoons. Yes, the special wooden spoons and they uh, uh, knock knock to each other and it became a song. So, yes, you see the interesting the Russian alphabet. I will give you some time to see it and we are waiting for your question. No, no. And Lada will come to me to show you the secret of Russian language because the most interesting part of Russian language uh, you can, for example, now thinking and ready to be Russian together. So, hello, hello. Yes, I would like to tell. Thanks, Masha. And now we are about to continue talking about Russia 
and now we will talk about Russian language and especially Cyrillic script. Uh, here you can find the alphabet, the Russian alphabet, yes? And you can see that we use not Latin letters, we use Cyrillic or Kyrillic letters, as we call it. So yes, and I will be pleased to announce all of the alphabet and maybe you will find some uh, differences or similarities. So it's A, B, V, G, D, E, it was the first line, the second one, J, Z, Z, I, I kratke, K, the third line, L, M, N, O, P, R, the fourth, S, T, U, F, H, C, uh, the fifth, Ch, Sh, Sh, it's like the hard sign, we call it like, there is no sound actually for this letter, it's just like hard sign, then goes U, and then soft sign. And the last line is E, U, Ya. Yes, the Russian alphabet was derived from the Cyrillic uh, script uh, for old Church Slavonic language. So yes, uh, the now modern uh, Russian um, alphabet consists of 33 letters. It has 20 consonants, uh, 10 vowels, uh, semi-vowel, uh, like in the uh, third, uh, in, this, in the second line is like I kratka or it's like um, there is the sound like y, y, something about that. And also there are two modifier letters, uh, hard sign and soft sign. So now I will be pleased to uh, and pronounce some of the letters. So the first is B. It uh, looks like like strange letter, probably for you because it's not Latin, it's Cyrillic, but it sounds like B. The same time, the letter that looks like English B is pronounced like V. Then goes D. The fourth is J. Uh, it's like J, 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 and the sound. And then it's not, it's not P, it's R. In Russian, it's R, the letter R. And then, like the hardest ones, I guess, it's the on the top is z, z, zhuk, then c, c, capla, then ch, chasi, then goes sh, like borsh, borsh, uh, in the end there is sh, and then goes the letter u, riba. It's not like e, it's u, it's more, it's more harder, it's like riba. And then I think we, I can teach you some of the, probably the most easiest uh, Russian phrases. So the first one is Privet. Uh, it's also pronounced like Privet. It means hello, hi, hey. Privet. Then goes Kak Dila. Uh, it's pronounced like Kak Dila. It means how are you doing, what's up, uh, how are you? Then goes uh, Ya Masha, but actually I'm Lada, but I will pronounce it like Masha. Ya Masha, it means I am Masha or my name is Masha. Then goes Paka, Paka means bye bye, goodbye. And uh, then goes uh, Do Svidanya, it's like Do Svidanya, goodbye. It's like more formal way to say bye bye. So uh, to your friends, you will say paka, but to probably your teacher, you would like to say do svidanya. Then there will be just like simple ones, I guess. The first line is da, net. Yes, no. Da, net. Then goes harasho. Good, okay, fine, well. Harasho. Then goes uh, pronounce is like uh, ya, ti, on, you, uh, I, me, you, he, him, ya, ti, on. Then davai. Uh, if you would like to, if you like to watch some sport events, uh, some kind of fans, they like to uh, scream 
for instance, on the tennis match, on the tennis game, Davai Davai to some of the Russian players. So it means like, come on, let's get it, come on. And the last is called Spasibo. Thanks. Thank you a lot. Большое спасибо. Спасибо. And the last, but not the least, is Russian italics. It's a true disaster. It's too hard to understand what is written, what is written on the paper. So Russian cursive makes me also cry sometimes, even me, as I'm Russian, and sometimes I cannot understand what is written in italics, especially on the recipe uh, of uh, the doctor, the doctor's recipe, I cannot read it any, anymore, because in any time, because it's absolutely impossible. And I would like to tell you thanks, thanks uh, for watching us guys, and I would like also to tell, welcome to Russia, we always will be pleased to uh, just to host you here in our Mother Russia. So thank you guys for being with us during this tour around uh, the country of Russia. And I guess that we will see you tomorrow during our Martinichki masterclass when you will knit your own doll with Masha. So thank you guys for being with us today. It was a really pleasure to have a chance to tell you about our country, Russia. So see you soon. Bye-bye. Пока-пока. Thanks for being with us.